my message for today is get your inheritance. Get your inheritance. Let's pray. Kind and gracious, loving Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. How many of you wish or wish sometimes in your life you had a rich uncle? Huh? Huh? Or just somebody who was near and dear to you that just might say someday to you, because I have so much love for you that I am going to share what I have, and I want you to know I have it all. Matter of fact, you probably can't imagine all what it is because eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. What am I talking about? What would you say to that? Would you say, get out of here? Or would you just look at them and smile under your breath and say, this person is crazy? Or maybe you might say, I wonder if he or she is talking about my inheritance. <laughs> well, I believe they are. We're going to go to the Bible and look at some scriptures talking about our inheritance and where it, kind of the roots of it. So let's turn to the book of Genesis. You got a Bible? I know it's probably going to be up on the screen, but those of you who have a, have a Bible, I would like for you to turn to the book of Genesis and go to Genesis chapter 17. And we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 7 of Genesis chapter 17. Amen. Amen. I know now we have technology. Now you don't have, you can't listen for pages. We, 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 huh? You got the, got the, got the phones and, the, and all that good stuff now. Huh? I hear you. I'm still old school. I still got to, I have to go to this. But anyway, let's read. Let's read it. Let me, let me read in your hearing. It says, when, and when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make a covenant between me and thee. And will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall the name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee, and I will make this thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Key things, I, I kind of circle, multiply you exceedingly, father of many nations, everlasting covenant. And he also spoke 
that, that he was going to do something about his seed. All right? <laughs> Stay with me. Stay with me. Let's look at Genesis 22. 22. Turn to Genesis 22. 22, and we're looking at verses 15 through 18. 22, 15 through 18. Hope we got it. We got it. Let's read it. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. It says, verse 16 says, And said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, as the sand which is upon the sea shore, and thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. Verse 18, and in thy seed shall all the nations of earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed me. Y'all hold on to that word seed. I'm going to get back to that. There's something I think is so powerful in the seed. In the seed. We're going to get back to that. I'm going to move on a little bit. So as Abraham was blessed, he was not in full extent of the blessings. He was not really seeing the full extent of his blessing. Because we understand, we talked about, I just talked, we talked about, you know, with the son, what he had to do, offer him up. You know, that was not an easy thing. He's wondering, really? Kill my son? He was wondering also, we know the situation with his wife, even having a son, wife, Sarah, getting pregnant? Really? Really? At her age? Now, that might happen with Ron and Claudette Robinson, but really? At, their, at, at his age? Wow. Well, let's turn to Romans 4 3. Says something here. Turn to your Bible. We're going to do a little, we're going to do a little going, skipping through the Bible a little bit, y'all. Hope you don't mind. We're going to go to Romans. We're going to Romans chapter 4. Chapter 4. And we're looking at verse 3 of Romans chapter 4. Verse 3, what's it say? What's it say? Romans chapter 4, verse 3. For what says the scriptures? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto, in, unto him for righteousness. You see, Abraham understood something. And we need to understand something. It's not by works. It's not by our power but it's by the power of God, by his power. He understood, and he was faithful in spite of the circumstances. He was faithful. And these things, because of his faithfulness to the Lord, he said that he would continue to trust in the Lord and continue to be faithful in spite of things he didn't really understand. <laughs> he says that he was 
also saying something to us today that I thought was a little powerful. Second Peter. Second Peter. Go to Second Peter. Second Peter chapter chapter three. Second Peter chapter three. We're gonna look at something here. Second Peter chapter three and verse thirteen. Three verse thirteen. Talking to us today. It says, Nevertheless, we, according to the promise, look for a new heaven. A new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Abraham says, He was looking forward to a city which his builders, who builders and maker, was of God. So even in his situation where he was, he was looking forward to an inheritance, a blessed inheritance, and that was to be with God. That's what our inheritance is all about. You want to get your inheritance? Continue to look forward to being with God. Being with him. Because it also, I like what the Bible is says in regards to understanding that because the promises to Abraham, we also receive the promises to us. It says in Galatians 3.29, it says, if you be Christ, then ye are what? And heirs, and heirs to the according to the promise. To the promise. We just read about knowing according to that promise. The promise is made. If we are in Christ, then we have that promise. Amen? Amen. Spiritual things are spiritually revealed. So, we may not be direct, Fred, you may not be a direct descendant of Abraham, but if you be in Christ, you are part of Abraham's, huh? You're of the family of Abraham, right? Huh? Right? Now, before I, before I get going, uh, Fred, I remember last week, a couple weeks ago, you held a mute, I held a mute for you. Can you hold my mute? Because I'm about to shout. I'm about to shout. Now, before I start the shouting, I want to get back to something about that seed. I know y'all thought I forgot about it, but there's something that I want us to understand in regards to the seed. Because it says that it says seed, we see the word seed and not seeds. Do you get me? We see the word seed and not seeds. We understand Abraham had many seeds. He had many descendants, right? What are we, what, so what, 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 what's going on here? Why is scripture says seed? Well, let's look at some scripture to help us with that. Galatians. Go back to the book of Galatians. And we're looking at Galatians chapter 3 and verse 16. Of Galatians chapter 3 and verse 16. Amen. And it says, now to Abraham and his seed 
where the promise is made. He said not, and two seeds as of many. Here we go. But as one and to thy seed, which is Christ. There it is. Christ is the seed. He is the one that we can have the blessings, the inheritance. It's not from Abraham's children. It's from Christ who was, came through the line. But it was appointing to Christ. He is the seed, A.D. He is the one. As I said, that we have our joy. Our joy is in him. It says, he is the seed, the maker, and the fulfiller of our inheritance. Galatians 4, 7 says, Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son and heir through God, Christ, spiritual things are spiritually discerned. I'm talking about getting your inheritance. That's what I'm talking about. Now, I know that we are living in a world today that is full of trials. We're experiencing, we're seeing a lot of things that are just not pleasant. Things that, that will make us wonder and continue to have us knowing that this ain't 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 a good place. Just 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 uh, at rehearsal last night as we were rehearsing the songs, uh, brother brother Fred mentioned to us about a situation where a young child, right, Fred, six years old, right, Fred, six years old. I know some of you might have heard about it went into his classroom with a gun and shot his teacher. Six years old. It goes on and on. People are killing themselves for no reason. People are killing each other for no reason. We're seeing where People are dying from various diseases all around. Cancer is rampant. We just got through the epidemic of COVID. We're still in it. In many ways, people have died. We're seeing a lot of tragedy in today, in the world. But there is hope. <laughs> That's not the end of the story. Romans 8. You can turn with me to Romans 8 because I want you to read it too with me. Romans 8, chapter 8, verse 18. This is one of my favorite books of the Bible, y'all. <laughs> Romans 8. I know I created this to the, the, the Derek brothers. They introduced me to this, to this book. And I know, I see Mark, I know they probably spent some time in it too on occasions. Because it's a special book. But Romans chapter 8, verse 18. Verse 8, 18. It says, For I reckon, <laughs> I know that brother must have been down south somewhere. When he must have spent some time down. I like, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time is, is, are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. We have a blessed inheritance. This 
trouble ain't going to last always. We have the promise. Paul says, I understand. We won't, we're suffering. But understand, it's not worthy to be compared to what we're going to get. Where are we going? What God has got prepared for those who continue to hold on. So I say, hold on, my brother. Hold on, my sister. Sister, I know you're online. Sister, sister Michelle and Sister Frederick, they're the hold on team. They're always talking about hold on. And you just got to keep holding on. So we need to continue to hold on to the promises. They're there. Now, I just want to do a little time. I promise you uh, I'm not going to keep you long. I promise you I'm not going to keep you long. Like I always say, like Elizabeth Taylor told her fourth husband, I will not keep you long. So I promise that I will not. So I'm going to go right to some things here that really excited me as I read them. Coming from the book Heaven, written by the pen of inspiration, Ellen G. White, on page 53 through 59, she says, in that day, the, the, the redeemed will shine forth in the glory of the Father and his Son. The angels of heaven touching their golden harps will welcome the king and those who have been washed and made white in the blood of the Lamb. A song of triumph will peal forth, filling all heaven, knowing Christ has conquered. He enters heaven courts, accompanied by his redeemed ones. Sister White also states, I saw a great number of angels, she says, bringing from the city the glorious crowns, a crown for every saint with his name <laughs> written on it. Have mercy. When I read that, I said, Lord, is my name written there? I'm hoping my name is written on one of the crowds. It's going to be there. Have faith in Jesus. She goes on to say, she saw leading the, his people to the tree of life. Upon the tree of life was most beautiful fruit of which the saints could partake freely. Now, that, that got me excited because, you know, I like to eat. I don't know about you. Huh? Do you like a good, do you like a good, do you like a good? Are you looking for it? That's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. Freely. Ain't nobody going to say that's enough. You, can, you can't keep, wow. That's what I'm saying. It says, in the city was a most glorious throne from which proceeded a pure river of water called the river of life, clear as crystal, it says. Now, <laughs> right here, I know a lot of you have traveled and gone many places and gone around, seen a whole lot, you know, all the beauties of this country and other places, faraway places. Sharon and I have done a little traveling ourselves and we've seen some things. But I like, Sister White says that as she saw these things, she said, my pen of inspiration, she said, the pen of inspiration says that my pen, the language could not, her language could not feebly attempt to describe heaven. Eyes have not seen, <laughs> ears have not heard what is prepared for those. She exclaims, she says, oh, what love, what wondrous love. 
the most exotic language fails to describe the glory of heaven. Matchless depths of a Savior's love. It says, unutterable rapture thrills every heart and each voice raised in grateful praise. Grateful praise. That's our inheritance, y'all. It says, the great controversy is ended. Christ has been vindicated. Sin has been exterminated. The, re the redeemed are being medicated, and we will forever be educated. The redeemed will re contemplate the work of God in creation and redemption. Our minds expand as we learn and delight in the wisdom and the love of God. As the years of eternity roll and roll and roll and roll and roll, will bring richer and still more glorious revelations of God and Christ. Well, I think uh, I'm going in here because I think we got a good picture of, of what our inheritance looks like. Do you want to get it? Do you want to receive that inheritance? Do you want to, you want to, you want to, you want to, uh, be there to get your inheritance? Well, choir, we're going to have, we're going we're gonna, to, we're going to do some singing about it. The choir is going to come up, but I just want to end with some, some, some things here. It says that my wife is coming up, but I, I, I kind of didn't put this in my notes because I know my wife is kind of peeking at my notes. Matter of fact, she put my notes together. <laughs> Truth be told. <laughs> huh? Can't be a liar. But I remember some years back when I was out there trying to make a make you know make make ends meet. Trying to keep Two kids in, 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 in schools, Christian education. Sharon is working, teacher. And I remember I had, at one time, I had like three jobs. I would leave in the morning, and I sometimes wouldn't get back till 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the morning. And... <laughs> I remember that one of the one of the blessings and one of the beauties of what even though what I had to do and what I went through, it was being able to come home and see the face of my wife. There would be days I'd be so tired, but I'd just make it into the driveway, and I would get out of my car, and I'd pull up, and my wife, many times, she would be waiting for me with a meal. I know you're tired, and she says, I've made you something to eat. Here's your food please enjoy. And I would look up and I would say, praise God for my wife. Now, I said that to say this. Even though I look forward to seeing the face of my wife, <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing the face of the Son of Man. I'm looking forward to seeing the Lamb of God. I'm looking forward to seeing the Prince of Peace, the face of the Prince of Peace. I want to see the first, the face of the first and the last. I want to see the face of the bread of life. 
I want to see the face of dearly begotten Son of God. I want to go home and see the face of King Jesus. I want to go home and see the face of my Savior. What's his name? Y'all, what's his name? What's his name? What's his name? John 14 says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Y'all get your inheritance, y'all. Amen, amen.